Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us. Today's webinar is titled Breakthrough Epoxy Coating Technology Gets You Back in Service in Under an Hour and is presented by Ivonic. Your presenter today is Sudhir Anarthachar. Sudhir is a coatings technical manager at Ivonic Corporation. He has earned his master's degree in chemistry from Polytechnic University, Brooklyn, New York and has over 20 years of formulation and application development of epoxy curing agents, industrial and architectural coatings, radiation curable coatings, and inks. Sudhir holds several patents in epoxy curing agents and radiation curable coatings. My name is Alex Payne with UL, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Please send us your questions by typing them into the questions box located on your screen. Our panelists will answer them at the end of the presentation, and we are recording today's event so that we will send you a link by email when it has been posted to ulprospector.com. Now I would like to turn the presentation over to Sudhir. Would you like to begin? Yeah, I'm, I'm all ready. Uh, good morning and welcome to uh, this exciting webinar. Uh, we, will, uh, we will begin now. Uh, this morning we're going to talk about uh, breakthrough epoxy coating technology which gets you back in service in, a, in an under, under an hour uh, we're going to glance on the two new products uh, which is ancomit 2832 and ancomit 2864. Uh, wet on wet epoxy coating uh, refers to a method of applying an epoxy coating where uh, additional coats are applied uh, before the previous curves have completely cured. Epoxy systems uh, can be used as a primer or as an intermediate coat. The functional primer coat provides the corrosion and the barrier protection to, to the steel, and it facilitates the intercoat adhesion of subsequent intermediate coat. So it is essential that the epoxy primer develop its functional properties like hardness, the crosslink density, and the glass transition temperature, and it should also provide a sufficient recoat window uh, for the intermediate uh, layer. The recent trends and drivers in the epoxy coatings market suggest that the unique characteristics of the epoxy curing agents can be capitalized by significantly lowering the cure time and thus enhancing the productivity and throughput in both factory and field applied epoxy systems. So in this presentation, we're going to demonstrate the performance attributes of a, no a novel uh, polycyclic amine modified polyamide, uh, which can provide rapid through cure and enables wet on wet epoxy coating applications. Uh, we're going to review the performance data of the two products, uh, which is Ancomate 2832 and 2864. The agenda for the, today's presentation, uh, we're going to review the market trends and drivers, and we will discuss the products for fashion return to service in both factory and field applied epoxy curing systems. And, and in, the, in the later part of the presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, the product positioning, how this product uh, fits into our uh, entire range of curing agents that, that we offer. The market trends and drivers uh, will guide us for the new product innovation, right? So the market and trend suggest that uh, what the market is looking for uh, enhanced performance, which means uh, in this case, improved corrosion protection, and, and most importantly, the improved productivity, which is the fast uh, turnaround time, which means that the, the epoxy coating sh should be able to provide you faster through cure at applied temperature, and it should, it, should, it should also provide you wider application windows and also uh, help with the reduced downtime. And, and last but not the least is uh, the eco-friendly uh, environment environment friendly uh, curing agents, which means low the formulation should enable low or zero VOC formulations, improved EHS profile, elimination of harmful raw materials, 
or the green and green and sustainable products. So these are the some of the market uh, trends that we see in the broader epoxy uh, curing agent market. I'm going to introduce the curing agent um, uh, now. The, the polycyclic amine modified uh, specialty polyamides. Uh, these are intended to expand our market space where the existing technologies does not deliver the desired level of performance. When I say improved performance properties, I'm talking about rapid return to service and a range of application conditions. The polycyclic amine, polyamine, polycyclic amine modified polyamides, they're designed to provide uh, productivity improvements in epoxy system. So the, by providing the faster drying time and improved blush resistance at ambient and also as well as low temperature applications. Uh, it should also provide the faster throughput and provide the desired uh, corrosion protection for the steel. The first product in this range is Ancomit 2832. Uh, Ancomit 2832 provides rapid through cure. By the, the way it does it, 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 it builds that faster hardness at ambient temperature. The complete, the, it begins to develop its uh, hardness in about 15 to 30 minutes. And by the end of an hour, you should be able to uh, top coat uh, the primers based on the Ancomit 2832. The most important aspect of the Ancomit 2832 is it receives the top coat without wrinkling. And I have two examples here. On the right side here, we have a uh, Ancomit 2832 based top coat uh, primer and a top, uh, polycarbamide top coat applied on it. On the left, we have a, a, a competitive technology which is based upon the phenalkamine, which are basically, especially the phenalkamine that are based upon the ethylene diamine. The ethylene diamine actually comes to the surface and reacts with isocyanides uh, and, and they cause wrinkling of it, and which, which is completely eliminated uh, use, using Ancomit 2832. And Ancomit 2832 provides uh, tack and blush free coatings regardless of application conditions, and it provides uh, excellent uh, uh, corrosion protection. Here we compare the physical and handling properties to a high solid polyamide. Ancomit 2832 uh, uh, is, has a, has a Gardner color of less than eight with a viscosity of about between 500 to 2,000 centipoise. And it has amine hydrogen equivalent of 156. And it is used at 82 PHR with liquid epoxy resin. And if you compare the gel time of the uh, Ancomit 2832 to the competitive high-performance polyamide, the Ancomit 2832 has a gel time of just about 22 minutes. Right? And it has a, a thin film set time of about two hours and 45 minutes compared to about seven and a half hours for the, uh, the high performance uh, polyamide which you're on the right side of the column, right? So, and it also developed a rapid hardness uh, compared to uh, the competitive curing agent. Uh, it, it has a first hardness of about 290 after seven days of cure. And it also has an excellent surety hardness on the day seven, which is about 74 compared to the 64 for the high-performance polyamide which you on the right side. So in this example, we show uh, Ancomit 2832 features faster dry to touch, enabling rapid overcoatability with excellent adhesion. Uh, here we compare the epoxy primer itself, and the epoxy primer uh, takes about 205 minutes to dry to touch based upon the high-performance high, high polyamide, but the primers based on the Ancomit 2832 um, is dry to touch in about 15 minutes time. So what does it mean? It also, the box, if, you, if you do the wet and dry, the, the cross hatch wet and dry addition test on this epoxy primer itself, both the high-performance polyamide as well as Ancomit 2832 gives excellent adhesion, which is, gives a rating of 5A, which is excellent. But what happens is when I take the primer and apply a polycarbamide top coat and I let it cure for 15 minutes and do the adhesion test, the, 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 the primer based upon the high performance polyamide, competitive polyamide, actually fails the adhesion test. 
and, 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 and the primers, which are based upon the ANCAMI 2832, is ready to receive the top code, uh, the polycarbamide top code, and, and it is shown here that it provides excellent adhesion in as little as 15 minutes, right? So the, we also do a, did an adhesion test after 60 minutes with the same primers, and the, if this time it's an epoxy primer with a polycarbamide top coat, and we do an excellent adhesion test after 60 minutes, and we do the, both the dry and wet adhesion test on the ANCAMI 2832, as well as the high-performance polyamide, and after 60 minutes uh, also, the high-performance polyamide is actually fair. It has a rating of about 2A compared to 5A. So this slide clearly demonstrates that, that, that you can record uh, the primers based upon the on 2832 in as little as 15 minutes and as late as 60 minutes. Uncommit 2832 delivers rapid cure compared to the competitive polyamide curing agent. Uh, in this example, uh, we have spray applied a primer based upon the Ancomid 2832 on the left side. And on the right side, we have an epoxy primer based upon the, the competitive polyamide. I, um, and we, 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 once the primer is applied, what we do is we start dropping this uh, simple test. Where we start dropping the cotton ball. And, and we figure out at what, they are, what time the cotton ball actually drops off the coating without leaving any residue on the substrate. Right. So if you look at this slide, uh, ANCOMIT 2832, uh, the cotton ball has dropped off at 15 minutes, and we do not see any residue. And, and on, the, on the right side, I have the competitive polyamide. Uh, it's even after 200, it takes about 200 minutes for the cotton ball. It is still sticking to the, to the substrate. This is a, a, a typical uh, test where, especially in, in the refinish application, uh, the, the, the spray applicators do. They apply the primer, and as they start dropping this cotton ball, and cotton ball no longer sticks to the substrate and does not leave any residue, that's the time it is an indication that this surface is now ready to receive the, uh, the, the top coat. This is the total coating system of ANCAMI 2832 primer with the polycarbamide top coat. Uh, in this case, the primer was spray applied uh, using a, a conventional spray gun at three mils wet film thickness. And we waited for 15 minutes, and the, uh, the, the primer is completely dry to touch at this point. After 15 minutes, the top coat was spray applied using a conventional spray gun at four mils wet film thickness. So we, we, it's a dry, the, the dry to touch, the, the epoxy primer is dry to touch in 15 minutes, and the primer was applied with the polycarbamide top coat. The polycarbamide top coat is now ready after 15 minutes, and we do a crosshatch adhesion test after 24 hours to see how does the primer uh, adhere to the, the top coat and what is the intercoat adhesion. Right? If you do the crosshatch adhesion test after 24, uh, 24 hours, there is no failure, and in this case, we have completed the entire spray application in about 40 minutes' time. Here we demonstrate um, the overcoatability of the polycarbonate, uh, the epoxy primer, ANCAMI 2832-based primer. Uh, we apply the epoxy primer and wait for 24 hours dry time to see what happens to the overcoatability of this primer. And we apply the polycarbamide top coat, and the polycarbamide top coat is still dry to touch after 15 minutes, and we do a cross-hatch addition after 24 hours, and this example demonstrates the overcoatability of the, of the, of the uh, 2832 primers. Um, here we demonstrate with the polycarbamide, and this, uh, this technology uh, will also enable to use uh, polyurethanes as well as acrylic resins over this epoxy primer. This table uh, shows the, the corrosion resistance of uh, uh, salt spray resistance after 1,000 hours of uh, uh, anti-corrosive primers, which are based upon ANCAMI 2832. 
which we, we actually, the, uh, the high solids primer containing an anti corrosive pigment, which is a zinc phosphate, a thousand hours uh, in a salt spray cabinet, and the films were applied at two mil uh, dry film thickness, and both uh, 2832 and the competitive polyamide have excellent corrosion protection as indicated by this uh, scribe, scribe creep rating, as well as the field blistering rating and the blister sizes. So we don't see any, uh, uh, it has a rating of 10, which is the highest uh, according to the ASTM test, and we don't see any field blistering. Now we're going to introduce ANCAMI 2864. Um, Ancomid 2864 is the next series of polyamide, which is based upon the polycyclic amine technology. Uh, the difference between the Ancomid 2864 and Ancomid 2832 is Ancomid 2864 enables low temperature cure at five degrees. And it also provides excellent compatibility, a good surface appearance and blush resistance over a wide range of application conditions and temperatures. Right? It provides excellent corrosion protection here is an example of the Ancomid 2864 uh, uh, when, when mixed with an epoxy resin. This is a clear coating, and we clearly see the, we, we hear the differences between a competitive technology, which remains hazy at uh, low temperature, but Ancomid 2864 is clear, and, 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 and it, it, it provides that excellent uh, surface appearance. These are some of the physical and handling properties of uh, Ancomid 2864. It has a Gardner color of less than eight and a viscosity between 1200 to 2200 centipoise. And, and it is used at uh, uh, 60 to 65 PHR based upon the liquid epoxy resin with an epoxy equivalent rate of 190. And it has amine hydrogen equivalent of uh, equivalent rate of about 135. Here's the more handling and performance properties for Ancomid 2864. Uh, it has a viscosity of about 1800 centipoise in this case, and with a PHR of about 65, and it has a gel time of 35 minutes compared to 65 minutes for the competitive curing agent. And, and the real difference between a competitive curing agent and the Ancomid 2864 com comes here well when you, when you study the film properties at fire degrees. In both cases, the film appearance was clear, and it was a glossy film, and we do the water spot uh, uh, resistance test, which, in, which indicates the carbamation. Both have an excellent carbamation resistance as indicated by the rating of four after seven days. But if you do the MEK double rub test, which is an indication of the cross-link density and how well the, 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 the film has cross-linked at this point, uh, uh, Ancomid 2864, after one day, gives about 200 uh, MAK double rub. It passes the test, right? Whereas this competitive curing agent is completely destroyed after one day, and it's uh, uh, and after 60 and, and after seven days, it has only 60 MAK double rubs. So this clearly demonstrates that that, that the 2864, which is based upon the polycyclic amine polyamide, uh, demo, it, it provide, bring builds this tussling density, uh, and it provides excellent uh, uh, MAK double. So 2864 allows for improved cure profiles over a wide range of application temperatures. Um, here uh, we do the phase three uh, dry time uh, at five degrees centigrade, 10 degrees centigrade, and as well as 25 degrees centigrade. The 2864 um, at, at uh, ambient temperature, which is about 25 degrees, has a thin film set time of about four hours, and at 10 degrees is about 10 hours, and at five degrees is 14 hours. Whereas this competitive uh, polyamide technology uh, has seven hours, 20 hours, and 36 hours, which clearly indicates that this polycyclic amine, which we use to modify the polyamides, actually provides excellent uh, low temperature cure, and it cures much faster. On the right side, we, here we do a DSC, uh, degree of cure, uh, at, at, five deg at five degrees centigrade, and over seven days. Um, this data clearly shows that the, the percent we, we, we plot the percent cure versus 
versus the time, which is about seven days. Uh, the 2864 develops uh, excellent cure after day one. The 68% is already cured on the day one, and by the time we reach that 97, uh, we reach about seven days, uh, 2864 is 97% cure. Whereas the competitive conventional technology, uh, you know, it, it's only 43% cured on the day one, and it, and, and it reaches about 88% after day seven. So the rapid degree here, the 2864, uh, it demonstrates the rapid degree of epoxy in conversion at low temperature, and it, con it continues to convert uh, versus the slow development for the conventional uh, polyamides. The 2864 uh, primers provide high levels of corrosion protection. Uh, in this case, we have the salt spray resistance test. Uh, this is for the 2,000 hours uh, with a conventional polyamide technology compared to the 2864. Um, this anti-corrosive primer formulation is based upon the liquid epoxy resin. This is a 25 PVC formulation with a 200 grams per liter or less of VOC. And this is a two quarts, uh, the total of about 190 to 220 microns. And this is tested according to ASTM B117 and, the AST, and also ASTM B 1654. And in both cases, it pro both uh, 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 conventional polyamides as well as the 2864 provides excellent corrosion protection. Twenty eight sixty four also provides excellent cathodic disbondment test method. Uh, cathodic dis uh, uh, test disbondment test method determines the resistance to a cata to of a coating system between the coating and the steel substrate, uh, which is uh, which is measured by the the loss of coating adhesion. Uh, this is an AST, this was tested according to ASTM G8 method. Uh, the and and loss of adhesion with the 2864 is only one millimeter and there was no fill blisters. And in the competitive technology, the adhesion loss was about two to three mils with no fill, fill blisters. Right. So this was done under seawater, 1.5 uh, voltage for 28 uh, days at uh, 23 degrees centigrade. So to, to, to demonstrate the cathodic disappointment of uh, Anthem at 2864. We have a number of polyamides in our uh, product line, and these are the, some of the highlighted polyamides. Um, Ancomid 2050 is oh. Ancomid 20, uh, 2050 is a standard industry uh, solvent-free standard polyamide, which provides uh, high corrosion resistance and good physical properties. But if you look at on the left side, we demonstrate the Ancomid 2832. And commit 2832 provides the excellent rapid coat, a rapid recoat, as well as excellent uh, top coat dieback resistance performance, excellent intercoat adhesion, and as well as a good corrosion resistance. Um, and and commit 2864 uh, uh, demonstrates excellent rust resistance, uh, fast mechanical property development, and excellent uh, uh, corrosion. Application recommendations. So we do recommend Ancomid 2832 for factory applied systems um, where you need faster throughput, faster fuel property development at ambient temperature, uh, early record window, and rapid multi-layer buildup, uh, either with self on self or with the polyurethane and the polycarbamide technologies. Uh, Ancomid 2864 uh, meets an industry driver for enhanced productivity and faster return to service for field applied systems under uh, low temperature conditions. Uh, these are the, some of the examples we have here, where this is a, an Ancomid 2832 primer uh, with a, a polycarbamide top coat. Uh, this is a, a, uh, an application where it demonstrates uh, excellent surface appearance. With that, I'm going to uh, open this up for uh, your questions. Great. 
This is Alex again from UL. I will help with uh, going through the questions. Our first one asks if um, an overcoat with the polyurethane or acrylic will get the same uh, surface appearance with the Ankamine 2832. And Ankamine 2832 uh, is designed uh, for uh, uh, overcoat applications, uh, rapid overcoat applications uh, in, in as little as uh, 15 minutes. And as we demonstrated, you can actually complete the entire application in about 20 minutes, uh, which is true with uh, polycarbamides, polyaspartics, uh, polyurethanes, and as well as uh, uh, acrylics. It, it works across a wide range of uh, chemistries. Okay, uh, the next one set is asking if um, what would be your, the recommended cure time um, before I can put coatings based on the curing agent back in service when applied at low temperatures? Uh, when applied at uh, low temperatures of, of 5 degrees, uh, we recommend that Ankamid 2864. Um, Ankamid 2864, when you apply at, uh, uh, at very low temperatures, like uh, up to 5 degrees centigrade, uh, you should wait for 24 hours to, before you apply the, the next layer of cure. Uh, if it is ambient temperature, uh, you can uh, apply uh, on both 2832 and as well as the 2864 uh, at less, at, 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 right after 30, 15 to uh, 30 minutes uh, time frame. Uh, great. The next question is asking about global re registration status, uh, both uh, 2832 and 2864. Are they available? Yeah, uh, the, they are globally available products. Um, they are registered. Uh, they are on the major uh, inventory. Uh, they are on Tusca, they are on Reach. Uh, they are in the China, Korea uh, inventories and all the major inventories, chemical inventories of the world. And they are, these products are available uh, globally. Great. What's the t minimum application temperature to apply? The minimum application temperature uh, for uh, Ancomid 2832, we recommend that you apply the Ancomid 2832 at room temperature. Uh, and for the poly, uh, Ancomid 2864, uh, you can go as little as 5 degrees centigrade. Um, how does this product, these two products, differ from other Ankamid grades? Uh, for example, two two one. Oh, uh, these are uh, uh, these are what we call as polycyclic amine modified uh, polyamides. These are completely different than the conventional polyamide technology. Here, uh, the poly polyamides are not known for uh, faster cure. Typically, you apply a curing agent like 20, 220 and 221, you won't be able to apply a top coat in about 15 minutes time because it does not develop uh, the, the, the required properties like hardness and, and glass transition temperature and the person cure. Uh, the biggest difference is the polycyclic amine modified polyamides are polyamides that provide you uh, the faster return to service. With this class of polyamides, uh, you can apply a top coat in as little as 15 minutes. That's the major difference between our conventional polyamides versus uh, the new generation of the polyamides that we talked about today. Great. Uh, another question is, is 2832 or 2864 compatible with silica nanoparticle dispersions, such as nanopol C784? Biobonic. Yes, if it is a, uh, if you are adding a, a dispersion, a nanoparticle dispersion into uh, either on the A side or the B side of your uh, uh, formulation, uh, they should be completely compatible with, uh, uh, with with both curing agents, and they actually actually help the polyamides. The polyamides have a lot of fatty acid background in them, uh, uh, backbone in them. The, the fatty acid backbone actually helps you to wet your pigments and it, it provides, it facilitates the dispersion into the, into, into, into the media you're trying to, to disperse it. 
and it should play very well with uh, uh, if you add uh, the nanoparticle based silica disposition on the uh, on, on, on the B side or on the A side of your formulation. When I say A side, it is typically uh, people formulate uh, the epoxy resins are on the A side uh, and uh, amine curing agents uh, typically they just call the B side. So you can add um, the, the nanoparticle dispersion either on the A side or on the B side and uh, 2832 and 2864 uh, plays with both one very well with both sides. Great. Um, one question comes in and asks, uh, that it says that some curing agents cause yellowing. Does ancamine, ancamide 2864 yellow? Um, we do not recommend ancamide 2864 uh, just based upon any epoxies for, especially where you have exposure to uh, a lot of sunlight. Uh, but if you are uh, using uh, it to uh, uh, provide the corrosion protection and facilitate the intercode adhesion, uh, it's, an, it's an excellent curing agent. Um, typically, um, the, the, the polyamides uh, typically allow less compared to the other conventional technologies like phenalkamines. Uh, but over a long period of time, depending upon what's your application condition and how long it's going to be exposed, uh, we do not recommend uh, the epoxy systems uh, to be used for uh, UV, pro you know, UV protection, where you, where you recording on going to see a lot of UV light, right? So from 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 the sunlight. So um, we do recommend you apply a, a top coat on it, and once uh, a top coat is on, on it, you should not see uh, it's yellow anymore. Okay, we have a couple questions about pot life. What are typical yeah. pot lives? Um, at amp ambient temperatures? Uh, the typical ambient uh, temperature for the 2832 and 2864 uh, on a 200 gram liter uh, uh, VOC formulation is typically uh, two, to, uh, two to three hours. Okay, and uh, we have actually a couple questions about concrete. Um, can the epoxies with these hardeners be used over concrete substrates? Yeah, they, they can be used uh, uh, over the concrete surface and uh, they do provide excellent intercode adhesion. And also uh, both the concrete and as well as metal, these, uh, these, these products can be used on both uh, concrete as well as metal, yes. Um, great. Uh, so for 2832 based primers, how does the rapid cure compare with the overspray uptake? The overspray uptake. Um, so uh, as we demonstrate, um, the 2832, right, once you apply the primer, uh, this primer should be ready to receive the top coat in about 15 minutes. So, uh, because it, it it actually uh, receives the top coat very well with, and it does not cause the surface, any surface defects, whether you apply a polyurethane top coat on it or a polycarbamide top coat on it, uh, you should not see uh, any surface uh, defects and, and, that, and that should be fine. Okay, we'll take a couple more questions. We've got lots of time. So if you uh, have more questions, please type them into the box and we can get uh, to as many as we can. Um, this next question is asking, uh, to get thinner coating, what solvent can be used to dilute or disperse the epoxy primer 2832? Uh, we, we, we can use a xylene. Uh, you can use a, uh, VOC exempt uh, solvents like oxo, um, uh, and you can use also use a, a, a MAK, a methyl amyl ketone, and a methyl ethyl ketone, uh, and, and acetone, uh, IPA, uh, the, the, all the, the conventional solvents that you use in the epoxy uh, coating formulations are, are very compatible with both the curing agents, both 2832 and as well as 2864. Great. Uh, question if it can be used for structural adhesives also. Uh, we have not done 
um, much work uh, with both 2832 and 2864 with the structural adhesive, adhesive uh, uh, applications. Um, I think I had to uh, had to consult uh, our experts within uh, uh, Ionic on the structural adhesives to see whether these products uh, fit in fit in the application. I don't have the data at this point. Okay. Um, how does the implementation of the anti-corrosive pigment affect the physical properties and the appearance of the films? Uh, in the example I show, uh, we, we, we do use uh, red iron oxide and a zinc phosphate um, as our corrosion uh, protection uh, pigments. Uh, the, those are our uh, package. Uh, they have a starting point formulation where we actually demonstrate the use of this, um, uh, uh, these pigments. Uh, which we can uh, put it up on the website. Uh, I think it's part of the, our uh, technical data sheet and uh, and they play very well and it does not change it, um, the surface appearance depending upon how well you disperse these pigments um, uh, into the matrix. Uh, you can you can add the pigment either on the uh, amine side or, or, or you can add the pigments or on the epoxy side. Okay. Great. Uh, we'll take one more question. Um, and any questions that we didn't get to today, we will definitely follow up with um, at a later time. The question is, which one of the 2832 or 2864 is recommended for clear, transparent epoxy coating and the recommended epoxy ankamide ratio? Uh, uh, we, we recommend one-to-one -one ratio st uh, stoichiometry uh, if you are using a clear. Um, and 2832, um, we, and I do recommend 2832 uh, based upon the, the, mean, uh, the, the, the backbone amine we use in this technology uh, if you are using a clear formulation. But if you are using um, the clear formulation in low temperature applications, uh, we demonstrate that the 2864 provides you uh, clear films uh, at very low temperatures, like five degrees centigrade, right? It, it does provide you excellent surface appearance at low temperature. And if you're looking at the ambient temperature, I would use 2832. Great, and great answers and great questions, everyone. Um, I wanna thank everyone for attending the webinar today. Just as a reminder, we will send you a link to the recording of today's presentation and the slides so that you can watch it um, again and share it with others at your company as soon as they are available. Uh, any questions that we didn't get to, we will follow up with, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Um, other than that, thank you everyone for attending and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye everyone.